Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morris, and today I'm discovering processes. Now, like any operating system, Linux can multitask, and it does so with processes, an organizational tool used to decide what programs can use the CPU at what time. If a program isn't responding right, or if you want to switch CPU power to another program, you can do so with the terminal. Now, to get an idea of how this works, let's start with boot up. You boot up your machine and the kernel starts some processes labeled as init scripts, I-N-I-T. These start other services that are called daemon programs. These programs hang out in the background just doing their thing with no interaction from you. And parent processes can in turn launch other programs called child processes. Keep that in mind as well. Now all processes are organized with a process ID, a PID. Init is always PID1, of course. And processes also have owner files owners just like files do. Now to view processes, all you have to type is PS. PS, BT dubs. All it shows is the processes associated with your current terminal, the bash, and PS. Now the PID is the process ID, the TTY, which is the second column right here, is the teletype or controlling terminal of the process. Time over here is how much time is consumed by the CPU for that process. And then CMD, of course, is the com current command, bash and PS. Now type PSX. And that is a really long command. <laughs> this tells PS to show all processes, not just what's in the terminal. The question mark, and I'll scroll up here so you can see it very long list okay so we have pid tty stat time and command this question mark right here that shows that there's no terminal associated with that process this new column over here called stat stands for state it is the status of the process it can be r for running s for sleeping t for stopped n for low priority a lowercase l means multi-threaded and so on so you'll see a lot under here with sl that means it's sleeping and it's multi-threaded. You can also type PS aux to see even more information. So I'll go back down to the bottom and type PS aux. And this gives you plenty more information on each of these. Now if I go back to the top where you can see the list of the columns, using this you get to see the user ID at the beginning, root, the CPU usage, the PID, of course, the memory usage. This VSZ is actually the uh, virtual memory size. RSS is the physical memory used. It's called resident set size. And then start, which means when the process was started. So it actually gives you the date right there. Now, you can use the man page to see all the other options that you can use with PS, and there are plenty, so definitely take some time to go look at those. Now, do you want to see actual dynamic views of your machine's processes? You probably do, so you can use a command called top. And this gives you a nice column, nice layout of everything that is going on on your machine. It continuously updates the process's activity. To remember it, like do like I do and just think top displays the top processes. There you go. Now by default, the top section, section shows you an overview and the columns are sorted by the CPU activity. So you'll see the heaviest ones up here at the top. Now let's look at the top section first. Of course, the name of it is top. That's the program. The numbers of t are the time and the day. So 174740, that's what time of day it is. Up 2243, that means my computer's uptime is 22 hours and 43 minutes. That is way too long. I should probably restart my machine. Users, of course, the number of users that are currently using the machine, and then load average, the process is waiting to run. This is listed first by average for one minute, then five, then 15. And if this num these numbers are under 1.0, that means the machine isn't loaded, so you're probably running your CPU just fine at the moment. So you can see mine, all of mine are under one. I'm doing just fine. The second row down here under tasks, all this right here, that shows me what's running, what's sleeping, what's stopped, what's in zombie mode. So I'm just doing just fine right there. I have quite a few sleeping. 
CPU percentages, of course. Now that information is a little bit different. The percentage of CPU used for the user process is first, US is user. The next one you have is for the system. The percentage after that is nice, AKA low priority processes. And then you have idle and processes waiting for input and output. Underneath this, we have the memory. It shows the memory usage and swap, which shows the swap space. You can hit H for help, for the help screen for more information, or you can press Q to quit. And I'll clear that screen. There we go. All right, now what do you guys use to track your processes? There are whole lots of options out there and I'm going to delve a lot more into detail about how you can actually edit the processes and close them in the next hack tip coming up. Now make sure to email me tips at hack5.org with your thoughts or you can comment below about what you think and what you guys use. And be sure to check out our sister show Hack 5 for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there and check out our new show Threat Wire for internet privacy and security news at youtube.com techfeed. I'll be over there too, reminding you to trust your technolust.